YouTube, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. My channel is Pens and Paint, um, where I talk about all things fountain pen related. Pens, fountain pens in particular. I don't talk about any other pens other than fountain pens. Um, and sometimes artwork. But I was asked from one of my viewers to do the eight pens question. So I'm chiming in. And I hope you enjoy uh, this session with me that I'm getting ready to do. So the first question in the eight pins question is, when and how did your fountain pen, pen journey begin? My fountain pen journey began, uh, it began actually, I was aware of fountain pens when I was a little kid because my grandfather had them in his desk at my, at my grandparents' house. Um, but I didn't really write with them um, until later in life. And actually I had a colleague at work um, who was using fountain pens and I was like, hey, what is that? And it had been a long time since I've really seen one. This is probably back around 2015, 2016. And I dived in and my first pen was a Pilot Metropolitan. I did not like it. <laughs> um, I did not like it. And, but I decided I liked the experience of fountain pens. And from there, my journey started um, in fountain pens. And I basically, was very slow about acquiring fountain pens, probably for the first three years. I think I stuck with only less than seven fountain pens for the first three years. And when I did buy them, I went from a Metropolitan, Pilot Metropolitan to a Lamy All-Star or Safari pen, because um, it's an aluminum pen, so I don't know exactly which one that one was or is. I still have that one. And then I started buying Twisbees and I was off to the races once I started buying Twisbees. Um, so that's how the start of my journey has begun and <laughs> I've been in it since. Um, what are my favorite inks in the beginning? What are your go-to inks now? So I think I did a wide range of inks in the beginning. I, of course, I think the first three bottles of inks that I bought were Pilot Irizuku inks which I still have three of them still, although one of them is running really, really low, which is the gray um, ink, but I still have those bottles and I bought Noodlers um, at the very beginning, which now I'm not so in love with uh, Noodlers as I was then. Um, where am I now in my ink journey? I've moved over to like experimenting with um, shimmering, shimmering inks, shading inks, um, really not familiar at the time about shading inks, but the shimmer inks were around. So I got really acquainted with those inks. And I think I was tuned into Robert Oster as a brand of inks as well as Sailor, um, but I didn't have a lot of Sailor. So that's where I was. Um, now I'm moving more into shading inks. I'm really enjoying those. Less shimmer, although every once in a while I do find a good shimmer and I'm kind of bummed out that I have to usually buy the bottle to get that experience but yeah I'm all over the place it just really does depend on what's hitting me at the moment so I'm pretty open uh the next question how have your ink and pen chase pen taste changed over time okay so the ink question I think I just addressed in the last question I think I've moved um to explore it a little bit further I think I still like really good, rich color inks, um, but I'm also open now a little bit more than I was to ones that are a little bit more subtle. And I definitely am starting to favor inks that have shading over um, shimmer. As far as pens are concerned, I think like all people who have been in the community for a while, I didn't deep dive into uh, gold nib pens until the last three years. So it took me a while to kind of ratchet up um, the cost of my pens, as well as nibs going from still to 14 karat to 18 karat plus gold. Um, that has happened probably in the last few years because I really wanted to make sure I was going to stick with it because sometimes I'm into things and then I fall out of things. And so I really wanted to make sure if I was going to buy a 14 karat gold nib, it was a financial commitment, but I wanted to also make it a commitment to my hobby and to, um, you know, the journey of writing with a fountain pen. So I think that's where <laughs> things have changed for me. I've gotten a little bit more um, pricey in my pen buying. Uh, let's see here. 
what are the inks and pens that you have yet to try but would like to? Inks, I don't really worry about because it's really hard to keep up with the world of inks because um, if you look at somebody like Ferris Well Press, I mean, they they release inks like, like Kleenex. I mean, they always have something out um, new. So I don't really worry about trying to keep up with inks so much. Right now, I've got way too many inks. I've got, I think, a hundred. What's in my current collection? Hold on just a second. I know I'm getting ahead of where things are, but... I think my dashboard is saying I have a collection of 123 inks. Um, most of those are not bottles. Most of those are actually ink samples. Um, and my pen collection, I, I'm kind of getting ahead, so I'll, I'll leave that alone. Um, but I would say where my pen collection is going is more on pens that I would like to try is a Mont Blanc. Uh, the 149 Meisterstruck, but I don't just want to do the 149 Meisterstruck. I want to do the 149 Meisterstruck with different nibs. So I'm getting more into nib refinement now. Um, when I was first starting, I would just stick with the fines, extra fines. Didn't really like how the mediums were laying down a lot of ink. I'm not a big ink gusher because I do write a lot of notes in my job. And so I need the ink to dry. I don't have time to sit there and wait for it to soak through and dry and all that kind of, all those kind of things. And even when I'm journaling, I just want to flip the page and keep going. But I have kind of experimented in getting medium nibs. Um, I bought my first broad nib, I think late last year, the beginning of this year that I'm enjoying from Caveco quite a bit um, on a Caveco Sport Cyan I have it on. And I always liked 1.1 stub nibs. So that's usually when I was in my earlier part of the journey, I used to buy a lot of 1.1 stub nibs from Twisby because safe bet and they laid down a beautiful writing experience for me. So I really did enjoy um, pens from them. But now I'm starting to get into um, custom grinded nibs. It's taken me a while. My uh, last video I did, or in the last month or so, hold on just a second. I demoed this pen or did an unboxing of this one, which is the Sailor uh, Stellar Black Hole. And I got this custom grinded from the Mr. Nip, the Mr. Nipsmith. Um, and it's an architect nib and it's my first architect nib. I did get a few years ago, I bought a SD, um, Estabrook SD in the Rocky Top Special Edition. And I love that pen and that, that nib was a journaler's nib and that is also a custom grind and I've got one that I bought at the DC pin show from Franklin Kristoff uh, that has a cursive Nakahara custom grind nib that they did right there on the spot at the at the pin show so I, I have a few but um, most of my pins I tend to just kind of take them as they've come I also had um, Emmy from Pin Venture had the Leonardo Nuda that I've shown on my channel as well. That one was tuned, but it wasn't a special grind nib. But I tend to take whatever I can get from the manufacturer as is without doing a lot of custom grinds because I find like most of them tend to write pretty well. Uh, let's see here, what is the next question? Uh, what is your Holy Grail pen? Okay, for a long time my Holy Grail pen, I don't. I, don't, I call them Holy Grails on my on my channel, but they're, I don't know what a Holy Grail pin really is. I don't know what people really mean by that, but if it's pins that you've been pining for, <laughs> I've had quite a few, and I've I've acquired quite a, quite a few of them um, in the last, you know, six years of being into this um, hobby, and I would say that my first one was probably the Pilot Custom 823. I finally got that uh, in the last year or so, last two years. Um, I really wanted that one, and I really wanted to get a Pelican. And um, so I've been working my way and getting those kind of pens. So I think that journey is going to be with me because I feel like this is a marathon and not a sprint. So I don't really feel like you will hit saturation. I mean, some people will hit a point of saturation and they're like, I've had it, but it's kind of hard to hit saturation when people continue to make products out there. So I don't feel like it's going to ever really truly stop. I think that um, there will always be like a pen that you really want. But I would say 
Right now, one of my Holy Grail pens would probably be a Pelican M800. It's one that I really want to get, and a, and a uh, Pilot Yurushi kind of, like a Yurushi, a Yurushi pen of some sort. Um, I saw some really beautiful ones at the DC Pens show last year, so I think that would be one that I would actually also really want to have in my collection. Uh, next question is number seven. Do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection? Is it a number? Is it a filling? When do you know that you've reached your maximum? Okay, we're in it. I just got to say, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. I think that, you know, as long as I have breath in my lungs and I'm writing with fountain pens, I think there's always going to be room in one's collection. I think that people try to, some people can limit it down there, uh, consumerism, um, uh, as my sister would say, your greed gland, uh, and, and say, oh, I can just live with 20 pens. I don't know if I have a number. And I think when it hits saturation is going to be kind of where I'm at now. I've, I've got enough. I've got probably about a good 20, maybe 25 pens that I can probably unload um, off of my collection, and I am going to be doing a D-stash if I don't do it uh, in April sometime. I'll probably do a D-stash, but it's going to probably be a more of a feeling like I think I've got enough. I'm kind of getting to that point where I feel like I've got more than enough pens. It's hard to rotate them through to what Simone was saying um, in the original of these questions. It's like you want to actually really write with the pens and, and enjoy the experience. And if you've got a lot, it's hard to rotate them through and really know. So I do feel like I will probably hit a saturation point. Um, and I might be getting to it sooner or later, but I'm just going to have to wing it. I, I have no answer to that right now. Um, and lastly, consequently, what would you do if another pen ink came along? Well, you buy it. <laughs> That's the obvious thing. Um, uh, to what they were saying, Le Leanne and Simone saying, it's kind of, there's no world of pen exchange and people are not going to swap out, probably most likely with you, their pens that cost hundreds of dollars and trust that it's gonna come back in the condition that you sent them to the person to, to try. I mean, I think it's really wonderful when you can watch uh, certain YouTubers you know, people send them pens, but the majority of us, none of us have sponsors that are willing to send us pens back and forth. I mean, you gotta be really well established and just kind of be out there. So I kind of feel like for most of us, we've gotta buy the pen to get the experience because unless you go to something like pen shows in your area, which I'm fortunate enough to have one that comes yearly in my area, um, you might not be able to get your hands on it. And so, shy of that the only way that you're going to do it if you have something that you see that you kind of like oh i really want that pen is to buy that pen um so if an ink comes along same thing i try to at all points right now is to one uh use ink samples and not try to buy bottles for every ink that i would like to actually try but then that ink <laughs> you want to see my ink uh, sample collection is pretty outrageous um and so, shy of those things, I kind of feel like uh, you're going to have to either try to get a sample or do the swaps that people do on some of their channels or go to a pin show or go to a pin shop and really try it. I mean, other than that, you have no other choice but to buy it. So, I kind of feel like you kind of get stuck. <laughs> so, that's my answer. I hope you enjoyed my feedback and my input to this. Thank you. Um, Leanna and Simone for doing this. I think it's wonderful that the fountain pen community is doing these eight questions or these things that everybody can kind of hashtag and like see what everybody's doing. All right, until next time, take care and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.